How is it to interview paedophiles? They're very clever, you know. Um, and what you've got to do is a lot of coppers, uh, they because they, I ended up teaching interview skills, you know. And there's nothing sneaky about it. It's a thing called retroposity. I give you something, you give me something. If you're in a hole, you, you, want, you want to help out that hole. You know, and like we said to you, you know, criminals get caught because someone grasses them. Yeah. Grasses, they're age old, they work. Surveillance, iPhones and that are good now. They solve murders on iPhones. They say there's more informants, informants than police officers now. Oh, it's just everywhere, you know. And, and you know, you've got to protect them as well. I'm not saying it's right, I'm not saying it's wrong, but, you know, it's a means to an end and it's... Um, it's a, it's a good way of working. You know, I, I, I did enjoy it and I was very good at recruiting informants. But what you got to do is when, when you get a sex offender, they're emotionally, they're, they're stunted, right? If they've, if they've been abused, which a lot of them are. So emotionally, you've got an angry young child there, right? Intellectually, they're clever, right? Because when you get a criminal, career criminal, now I, I do quite a lot of stuff with big Chris Lambriano, you know? Yeah, uh, and... And of course, Chris is a, was a career criminal, you know, and, and he started off and when, when he told you about his uh, his timeline of offending, you know, yeah, it's it the and stuff. incredible how, you know, but you won't get that with sex offenders. With sex offenders, what you'll get is on the whole, they'll have no convictions. If they do, it tends to be for deception, but they won't. That's why these, these um, CRB checks are, are a nonsense when it comes to sex offenders. You know, they are, if you, you don't want a thief working for you, they're perfect. Or you don't want a doorman who's going to knock people's teeth out. They're fantastic. Sex offenders are obsolete. They ain't going to work. So what you can't do is try and outwit them, right? And don't ever be a smart ass to people because if, if I'm horrible to you, the, the last thing you're ever going to do is talk to me. So you split an interview into two halves. You have their half, then you have your half, right? And a lot of coppers go in on the attack. You see it on the telly. I put it to you and all this. And it's a not, you can't do that, right? So what I used to do, was I, I would, um, I, I'd say to my mate, you know, you just go along with me. So I'd make out I'd been drinking all night, right? And I'd have a folder. Now, what I would do, I'd know my case inside out. I'd know it so inside out, I could actually almost verbatimly read their statements without referring to it. So I knew everything in that file. So I'd take in a load of papers and I'd put them on the side and I'd say, so look, I always made out I was lay and everything else. And I'd say, like, and I'd say to my mate, I haven't read through this, you know. And I used to put a cup of coffee on the side and then drop it on the paperwork sometimes. God, look, it's, oh, I don't need it. Oh, I can't be bothered to read. And you see them sitting there smugly looking. And, and and then you just engage in conversation. Now, no comments are a skill in their own right. And actually, no comments are the best tool you can ever have because you can, you can if you know how to interview properly, really, really tie someone up with a no comment. And I know it's going to be people watching this going, no, oh, sneaky sod. But it's, I was just about to say, sneaky bastard. Sneaky it? bastard. <laughs> it, it, look, it's a battle of wits. And mm -hmm. it is a battle of wits. You know, you win some, you lose some. Do you have so, a photographic memory, John? I, I'm pretty good. My memory's yeah. pretty good. If if I know what I'm on about, it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Now, I interviewed um, Tracy Connolly, who's Baby P's mother, right? And uh, you know the Baby P case. The, no. the, the little Peter Connolly, the little boy that was... Um, brutalised to death in, in Tottenham in London it made the papers his mum's just been released I think um, anyway they, they just brutalised this kid to death they, they just did all sorts to her and her, her partner um, and, and, and she was a nutcase you know uh, psychopath really but when you interview her she was everything was um, oh, I'm, I'm really good with my children uh, you know I put them on the naughty step and you go along with it. You say, well, that's good. That that shows that you're caring and you're doing it right. And what I'd done was I'd read the paediatric report. And the paediatric report was appalling. And, and it was, you know, it, it's evidently backed up. And there was high-impact trauma injuries that only a fist could have, you know, a, a facial bruising consistent with a blunt instrument hitting at four. So someone smashed a kid in the face, you know. And I said, look, you know, there's injuries. We, we're going to have to talk through these injuries. So I'd always draw a little picture, and I drew a little picture of the boy, and said, "Look, where this bruising on the face? How did he get that?" And she went, "Well, she said um, he um, he bruises easy." And I went, "Oh, okay, that would explain all the bruises. So go along with it." And she said, "Look, he was hit in the face by a toy." And I went, "Okay." And then well, they're giving you a gift now, a toy. It's a top. And she said, "Right, well, what toy is that then?" Oh, it's like um, she's actually said, drew a picture of like a knuckle duster. So, and what it was was actually a teething ring, right? So it was a teething ring. So it was a round little teething ring that it holds them by. 
So I got to, to describe it, and she said, it's really soft, and, and it's got the consistency of a wet sponge. And I went, OK. So she's now taken ownership of that, that her kid has been hit in the face with something with a consistency of a wet sponge. So I said, well, well who hit him? Oh, another boy, her, his friend, who's also two years old or 18 months or whatever, and hit him really softly. And so what she's doing, she's taken ownership of the interview now. And she was saying that he hit him in the face like that. She's showing me. So I said, please show me, show me. So when you interview, you only have to ask four questions. Tell me, explain, describe, show. That's all you need to ask. Open questions. Get as much info as you can out of him. And she's showing me and all this. I said, well, you know, my God, you said the kid bruises into you. You weren't lying, were you? She went, no, I'm not a liar. They're saying I'm a liar. And I went, oh, right, now what about this injury? And it went on like this. Every injury was ridiculously accounted for. And, you know, she's sitting there smug. So she I was said, sticking herself in every oh, question. Of course, and giving her ownership of it. And saying, OK, you're not being sneaky. You know, well, you are, I suppose, but you're not lying. You're not tripping up. She's tripping herself up. And she's had her off. So I said, OK, now, before we go, you know, we've just got to go through what they've said. And then I turned and I just said, right, this injury in the face is conducive. This is a paediatrician with 20 years' experience dealing with child abuse matters, blah, 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 blah. Read out all our credentials, you know, and then read, this is a high-impact trauma with a blunt instrument to the face conducive with a fist travelling at speed, bang, bang, and then this, and then you said this, but hang on, boom, boom. Of course, she turned around, and she just stood up, and she just went for me, you know, in the interview. Wow. Fucking, you know, yeah. spitting and all sorts. But, and, and then what you say, well, that's the monster your your, your yeah, son sees. So pushing the buttons. Yeah, yeah, because and this is what they do with grooming. You see, they you know they're all decent and they're grooming. It's the same as people chatting a bird up. It's you look nice, you smell. And this is what they're doing. They're, they're being ingratiating and all that. Mm -hmm. But but their their goal is to have sex with them or to mm -hmm. hurt them or whatever, right? And then when they don't, that's when you see the demon. So what you got to do is don't put yourself intellectually above them and be a smug bastard. Mm -hmm. I would never wear a suit. You know, suit again, it's official, it's horrible, it puts people ill at ease. Put them at ease. And again, give them a cup of tea, a cigarette and all that, you know. If they're, if they're a good person and they're not going to tell you anything, then they ain't going to tell you anything. You ain't going to get anything, you know. But you don't need to be a bastard to them. Um, but there are some people, you need to use every bit of intelligence you can.